Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where OP's coworker comes up with an interesting name for her baby. Am I the jerk for calling my coworker's baby name idea dumb and making her cry? So my coworker is pregnant with her first baby and she asked me yesterday my thoughts on her baby name and things did not go well. We work at a hotel that doesn't get much traffic so there's always a lot of downtime to sit and talk. We're not friends but since we're both girls and we're the same age, 23, we do speak a lot when we're on the same shift together. She asked me if I had heard of the name Venus and I said yes and she says that she's going to name her daughter that but add an A at the end so it's Venusa. She said that that's so exotic and unique sounding, right? I said no, it sounds like the already existing name Vanessa. She got upset and said no it doesn't and that she's asked her boyfriend and her parents and they all said that it's a name that's never been heard of before. I said that it sounds like Vanessa and that it's kind of a dumb name to give someone since every time they say it out loud, people will call them Vanessa and it will always be misspelled. She started to cry and said, great people are already insulting my parenting choices and that I'm being a jerk and left the shift early. Now our other coworkers have been messaging me saying that I'm disgusting for making a pregnant woman cry. Am I the jerk? I was just being honest and she asked me. You said it sounds like Vanessa? Cool, I'm with you on that. But then you said, it's kind of a dumb name to give someone. That's where you dipped your toe into you're the jerk. You didn't jump in fully, but it's still slightly you're the jerk. While I agree, soft you're the jerk, I really think people need to stop asking questions they don't want the answer to. You're right that it does sound like Vanessa, and I agree that it is a dumb name. On the other hand, when someone you aren't close with tells you their baby's name, you just say, oh, that's nice, no matter how bad it is. That's just common sense. You're the jerk. There are exactly two acceptable reactions when an acquaintance, coworker, or anyone outside your absolute inner circle tells you their future baby name. One, oh, that's nice. If the name is truly horrible, then you can go with option number two. That's an interesting name. Where did you find it? And then whatever the story is, you just nod politely and drop it. This isn't your battle to fight. You'll gain absolutely nothing from it, nor will it benefit your relationship with this person. All you will achieve is making them feel bad. Well, I bet Venusa would appreciate being stood up for. It's just selfish and cruel to name your kid something stupid like this. Save it for a cat or a dog, not your kid. Well, what do you think? Is Opie the jerk or not? Please share your thoughts. Maybe their next baby can be named Uranusa. Well, actually, it would be Eartha, right? According to our solar system, that is. Am I the jerk for telling my long-lost sister the truth of her parentage? I, 24 female, have lived with my father my whole life. In my dad's younger single days, he used to have a taste for married women. All of his kids have been conceived with married women, including myself. My half-brother found out the man who raised him was not his biological father after he died of a heart attack. He met our father when he was 18. I, of course, grew up with him, so I never doubted he was my biological father. When I was in my teens, I noticed my father had a picture of this girl on his phone, and I thought it was strange. I pressured and asked and bothered him for months, and he never confessed, until 2021. He went on a trip to San Francisco to see my half-brother who came to visit from Texas, which was about a four-hour drive from home. So finally, after years of asking, a few hours of pestering him and him having nowhere to go finally made him crack. The girl I've seen pictures of on his phone is my half-sister that I never knew about. The biggest secret, all apparently for her sake. Her mom was obviously married, happily apparently. So when my sister was born, she proclaimed her daughter was legitimate and my father had no say. She lied about her daughter's parentage, had two more actually legitimate kids afterwards. They moved away and lived happily ever after. I don't know if my father ever got the chance to hold her when she was a baby, and I never got to know my sister. And when I found out, I was told I could never say anything. I could not topple the sham marriage her mother had so that my sister could know the truth. I could never speak to my own flesh and blood for the remainder of my life. It would ruin her family if I did. Years passed and I debated. I wanted to speak to her. I wanted to know her. I wanted her as a friend on Facebook for years since before I knew who she was and it never seemed to be used. She never posted anything. So four months ago, I made the choice to say something, thinking her Facebook to be absolutely dead. I thought to myself, there was a 90% chance she would never see it. Yesterday, she opened it. She did not respond. 
Her sister did and refused. Stated I was lying. There was absolutely no way. Her mother would never do that. I must be mistaken. I showed her the proof I had. I offered to buy her two 23andMe tests, a $300 investment. For myself and for her if she wanted to know, and if they refused, I would leave them alone. But I can't shake this guilty feeling that I made a mistake, that I toppled a whole family because of the truth. So, am I the jerk for opening my mouth? Should I have gone my whole life never speaking to the sister that I never knew or wanted to know? Or is it a bit of both? Edit. Just to clarify some things people are pointing out as inconsistencies. 1. Her name and birth date are in my father's main use email address. That's how I found out her name. As for the pictures, she was his phone background. No real snooping aside deduction. I looked up her name on Facebook while I was a teen trying to figure out who she was. She accepted. I'm assuming because I have a real account from her previous hometown and we were around the same age. Pictures were originally obtained from my stepmom who had a mutual friend with my half-sister's mom on Facebook. That's how he had them. 2. She's 26. She's not a kid anymore. And she has a college degree. 3. Her mom cheated and my father is certain she's hers because at one point when she was 10 years old, my stepmom had a mutual friend still in contact with half-sister's mom and provided her address. Dad went to their house a state away, which of course was very weird to them. Half-sister's mom accepted giving my dad a piece of her hair so that he would leave them alone after that. Dad DNA tested and it came back 100% you are the father. My dad is, yes, a homewrecker, but not a deadbeat. He kept contact with my brother's mom. Not romantically, I might add. Before my brother knew he was his father. Anything she asked of him for his son, he would provide. If my sister's mother asked him for anything regarding her kid, he would have done anything for her. But she decided to keep everything a secret and sever all contact with him. Separate note. Yes, I was selfish. Yes, I didn't think things through. If she never speaks to me, I would accept that. I know my dad did what he thought was the right thing in letting her live without him. But a father will always love his kids, even if he can never know them. My dad's getting old, and he's mentioned before that he would love to see her at least once before he dies. Maybe have one conversation. Maybe go to a store she worked at and buy something. In a way, I tried to hopefully have her speak to him at least once, and instead, I ruined it all. You're the jerk. This wasn't your choice to make. Had you been sought out, I couldn't fault you for being honest. But you did this because you wanted a connection with her. That's a selfish reason. You crossed a line by disrespecting the potential emotional harm your actions would cause. The truth, while important, isn't always a justification for hurting others. You should have found a more empathetic and tactful way to approach the situation. You not only damaged your relationship with your sister, but also with her family. Your actions have consequences, and in this case, you've caused distress to multiple people. You're the jerk for failing to consider the full impact of your choices and instead prioritizing your own needs. You've thrown your sister's family into turmoil and potentially destroyed her sense of identity. You must now face the repercussions of your actions and work to make amends, understanding that forgiveness may not come easily or at all. You're the jerk. You invaded someone's privacy for your own reasons. You blew up her world and her family. For what? Because you want to know her? Maybe it will be okay, but you did not give her or her family a choice in this, or worse, you ignored their choice and steamrolled your own. You're the jerk. You make your father sound like some hard-done-by saint. Poor guy, never even got to hold his kid. Unfortunately, you sound just as selfish and self-centered as him. You blow up someone's world for your own selfish purposes. You might get the chance to meet another sibling yet. With a man like your father, they could start coming out of the woodwork. Not the jerk. The mother ruined her marriage when she took the choice of raising a kid who wasn't his out of her husband's hands. She lied to him and your father enabled it for his own benefit. He's not the victim here. She was happy not to be responsible or he would have chosen to be a dad to this girl. You are not a good person. You did all of this selfishly for yourself. This was not your decision to make. You're the jerk on every level that you could possibly be in this situation. You shattered a happy family that you weren't a part of because you wanted to know someone? Are you seriously that entitled? Like, who do you think you are? You had absolutely no right you're so selfish. You're the jerk. Actually, that mother shattered her family when she cheated on her husband, had a baby with another man, and let her husband think that it was his for 26 years. 
Am I the jerk for refusing to take care of my kids? I, 26 female, gave birth to my second kid two days ago. It was a beautiful home birth, so I was never discharged from the hospital. With my first and this pregnancy, I made it clear to my husband I wanted to follow the 555 rule. Five days in bed, five days on the bed, five days near the bed. He seemed to drag his feet, but because he wanted kids more than I did, he agreed. I still love my kids dearly. I just didn't want to go through a pregnancy. First five days in bed. Nothing but holding my daughter, feeding her, and resting. Next five days on bed. Sitting up, still feeding her and holding her, doing homework with my son, crossword puzzles, etc. Next five after that around bed. Still majority resting, but doing light chores, folding laundry, changing diapers, just not standing for more than 30 minutes. All while still holding her, feeding her, doing homework with my son and coloring. This baby is very colicky and my husband is the one having to get out of bed, walk around with her and sit in the rocking chair, do diapers and take her and our son on walks to go get some sunshine. Our son, who's five, has started acting out at home due to the stress of the new baby and lack of sleep. We've offered him going to my parents next door and he seems interested. We've prepared a month's worth of freezer meals so for dinner all he has to do is throw the disposable tin in the oven and walk away for a few hours. We have more than enough disposable dishware. We have a dog he needs to feed and take out on walks with the kids. Today, he came to me crying, saying it was all too much and he couldn't do this by himself. I reminded him that he agreed to it and I have to go back to work shortly after the 555 is up, so I need to be as rested and healed as possible so I can better perform tasks at work, then come home and perform tasks as well. He begged me to help out with our son, who will not sit still, and help with light cleaning wiping countertops, gathering clutter, etc. I again said no. I am entitled to rest and I will help around the house in eight days. Not the jerk. I assume all the stuff that he's crying about is the stuff that you're going to be expected to do on an ongoing basis after you return to work. OP. Yes. I, for the most part, do the cooking, cleaning, 90% of the childcare. He mostly just feeds the dog and occasionally walks him. Does he do anything in regards to parenting under normal circumstances? Why have another kid with a man who's proven he can't handle more than 10% of adult responsibilities? OP. He sometimes helps with homework and discipline, but it's more often than not him and it falls on me. I had another kid with him because I do want our son to have a sibling and my husband convinced me things would be different. You're the jerk to yourself for having kids with this man. Being almost completely in bed for five days after giving birth is the bare minimum. You're not the jerk for wanting this 555 rule. It shouldn't need to be a rule. You should be able to do it because that's how you're feeling and your loving husband should want you to rest and heal. However, I would be very careful about sending your older kid out of the house right now, even if he is close and even it's with people he knows. He's acting out because he's feeling displaced by the baby. He needs to be physically and emotionally brought closer to understand his place is still where it's always been, with you. Instead of sending him to the grandparents' house, can the grandparents come to your house for an hour or two a day to give him extra attention or make sure that he gets a healthy dinner or whatever? Keep your eldest kid close. Not the jerk. But unless you're extremely healthy, you'll need to mobilize a little. If you get a deep vein thrombosis, have a stroke or a pulmonary embolism, that'll really ruin your maternity leave. The blood gets extra sticky during late pregnancy to compensate for and reduce blood loss at birth. If you're genuinely barely moving for 15 days and have any of the above conditions, your risk of having a stroke is very high. Please mobilize. Based on the medical advice my wife got, you're risking major issues with clots and other issues. The 555 rule is basically made up and is completely non-medical. Not the jerk. Retired nurse here and just want to offer a caution. Five days in bed after delivery results in a large risk for blood clots and compilations, even after an uncomplicated delivery. And it would be perfectly acceptable to hire a cleaning service for two to three times a week if you can afford it. Baby clothes pile up quickly. Mother of four here. Let me tell you what your husband is probably thinking, but he's afraid to say it to you because he's a weak man and you're an immature baby. Stop being lazy. Yeah, you had a baby. Big whoop. You think you're the first woman to ever give birth? That's not an excuse to spend weeks laying about being lazy while literally everything else falls on him. It sounds to me like you're a naturally lazy person 
and jumped at this opportunity to stop contributing in any way. I hope he leaves you and finds someone who actually wants to be a responsible adult. Sincerely, a woman who's had four kids of our own and never once felt or acted as entitled as you're being. Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend to stop eating so much? So, some backstory. During my undergrad years, my parents paid for my grocery bills because they believed that good food was important to a student's health. They never set a monthly limit to how much I could spend, but I was really frugal and never went over a $200 limit that I imposed on myself. Now I'm back in grad school for my master's and my parents are covering again. I know I'm an adult with a few years of work under my belt now, but not having to worry about groceries lets me chip at rent and loans and other bills without losing sleep. I'm back on my extremely frugal way of eating and meal planning because still, I'm not going to take advantage of my parents' generosity. My boyfriend, however, basically inhales all of my food every time he's over. Like eating all my snacks and legit every frozen meal, all the meat. One time he even ate the other half of a cheese I had already bit into. He's basically wolfing down my dinner and lunch. It's forced me to open my own wallet to accommodate him because I'm not going to send my parents a suddenly huge grocery bill and he's seriously messing up my finances. I plan basically down to the dollar. We got into arguments and his side is basically that my parents are going to cover anyway so I need to stop spending my own money and not worry so much. And when I go over to his house, I eat his food too, but I don't eat as much as he does. My arguments are, just because my parents are covering doesn't mean he can eat anything he wants. He legit eats my whole fridge. I'm not even joking. The only thing he leaves are the vegetables. And he could eat less. When we go out, he often has leftovers, so why eat everything at my place? I've banned him from cooking and using the raw ingredients at my place, and I'm only giving him my small stash of snacks when he comes over. And after the third time, he's not talking to me. Honestly, this is such a stupid fight. But if I am the jerk, then I'll apologize. Update. First off, I'm a guy. I've gotten like at least five DMs from sleazy dudes telling me they'll treat me better and calling me weird pet names. Had one guy say, hey baby girl, which just made me laugh. And all of their profiles are gross. Some people are worried about the $200 a month. That was 10 years ago when I was an undergrad. Sorry for the confusion. It's closer to $300 or $400 now, and some months when I get my school student food bank, I only go if they have too much because I know there's people that actually need it, and it's like $0 to $100, so I guess it's $250 to $350 average. But yeah, I'm doing alright. I didn't mention this, but I did cover part of my parents' mortgage when I was working after my bachelor's. Some people made comments about me leeching off my parents. I am right now, but I did help them too. My parents are angels and they know my friend's birthdays and always tell me to take them out during those months so they're okay with paying for my boyfriend, but I'm not. Even during undergrad when I dated another guy I thought I wanted to marry one day, I never used their money on him. I don't use their money on anyone but myself. Does that make me selfish? Maybe. But honestly, I don't really care. Lots of people are telling me to dump him. Honestly, the spark wasn't there anymore for a while because we've been fighting over this and some other stuff for months. And a lot of people are telling me that this is a respect issue more than a stupid fight like I thought. I'm going to think about how to approach this since he's just ignoring me now. But yeah, think letting this relationship go might be the right move. I think I knew already, but sometimes it's hard even if you know it's the right thing to do. Not the jerk. Your boyfriend is an inconsiderate jerk and it feels like he is more just using you as a food bank so he doesn't have to spend as much money on his own food and it feels like he will likely extend this to other things the more your relationship progresses. Also, your boyfriend is being completely inconsiderate of your own parents and by extension feels like he is entitled to do as he pleases through you while actively exploiting you and leaving you hungry. Would I be the jerk for telling my roommate's girlfriend it shouldn't be her concern when I'm coming home? I, 24 male, live with my cousin who's 23 male and recently he began dating a former coworker of ours, 20 female, who has her own place. They started officially seeing each other around Valentine's this year and have literally spent less than 24 consecutive hours apart since. That being said, apart from what feels like the loss of a best friend, I'm very annoyed and frustrated that he is now never home to help with chores, nor to care for our three cats, and when he is home, she is there now too. Every time. I don't dislike his girlfriend, even though we shared some less than friendly interactions when working together, that's a whole nother story. 
but I definitely did not sign up to live with her for days at a time. Although I have never outright expressed this, I have hinted at it a couple of times and joking, saying that she does not get a vote on trivial matters because she doesn't live here or pay rent, to which her reply is always, I basically live here because of how much I'm over here. Today, she texted me asking if I would be back home tonight. I'm visiting my parents for a couple of days. And when I said I wasn't sure and why she was asking, she responded, Oh, just wondering. Would I be the jerk for replying that it's none of her business when I decide to come and go to my apartment? For clarity, I have two of my three cats with me visiting at my parents. His is back home with him and his girlfriend. Due to his excessive absence, I've decided to try my best to retain sole custody of the third, shared kitty, as I will likely be relocating for work in the coming months. 2. Yes, I sort of contradicted myself, but to clarify, he has not been home for about 70% of the past month. The other 30% he is, and she's with him every night he stays at home. However, even when he is home, I've had to clean up behind them in common spaces. 3. The lease is in both of our names, split down the middle with our own bedrooms and bathrooms, but shared common spaces. We have previously agreed upon no hooking up in the common spaces. I have decided not to respond to her and will be contacting him shortly to find out why she's asking me such things instead of him and why they need to know. Update. I asked my cousin why his girlfriend was texting me, wondering about when I would be coming home. He told me it was so that he could make sure his cat wouldn't be by himself last night. When I asked why he didn't just ask me himself, his response was that he was about to ask me, but then he got ready for class and forgot to, so she just went ahead and did it. I then explained how she could have just said that when I asked why, and that it came off as weird as a text from her and not from him in the first place. He apologized and reiterated that it was so that his cat was not alone for the night. I'm glad this was the reason, as I don't feel as bad about leaving his kitty with him. Currently house hunting, as I'm still annoyed about other issues, but that'll be another am I the jerk for another time. Not the jerk. There is nothing more annoying than watching grown adults behave as though they're joined at the hip. You need to have an honest conversation with your buddy alone about both the frequency of her visits and the diminishment of your friendship. He may not hear you until he's out of the honeymoon phase, but it deserves to be said. And finally, that text would have hit very different had she not built a history of claiming part ownership over a space that isn't her own. Keep the peace is a great principle to ensure that the bigger, louder jerk always wins. It's your apartment. Next time, ask her if she plans to still be at your house when you arrive. OP. The usual me would have said exactly this and wouldn't care to be labeled as a jerk. The only reason I'm second guessing is out of respect for my cousin, but this is not the first time I've compromised my usual tendencies and efforts to do so. Karen keeps stealing from my garage, so I got her arrested. So this story started about a year ago, when I noticed some of my gardening tools were missing from my garage. At first, I thought I must have misplaced them, but after looking around the garage a bit more, I realized that they were actually gone. I asked my wife if she had moved them somewhere else, but she had no idea what I was talking about. That's when I knew something was fishy. A few days later, I caught my neighbor, who we'll call Karen, red-handed. I had been working in my garden when I heard some rustling in the garage. I went to investigate, and there she was, rummaging through my tool collection. When I asked her what she was doing, she just smiled sheepishly and said, Oh, I was just borrowing a shovel. I didn't think you'd mind. To be honest, at first, I didn't really mind that she was using my tools. After all, we were neighbors, and it seemed like a small thing to get worked up about. But then it started happening more and more frequently. Every time I turned my back, Karen would sneak into my garage and take whatever she wanted. It got to the point where I couldn't find my tools when I needed them and it was becoming a huge inconvenience having to ask her over and over again to give me back whatever she had taken. I tried talking to Karen about it several times, but she always just apologized and said she wouldn't do it again. Of course, a few days later, I would catch her in the act once again. It was starting to feel like a game of cat and mouse. That's when I decided enough was enough. I knew I needed to take matters into my own hands or she would never stop. I couldn't just let Karen keep taking advantage of me like this. So I decided to put up some security cameras in my garage to catch her in the act. I'll never forget the feeling of satisfaction I had when I reviewed the footage for the first time. There was Karen, sneaking into my garage like she owned the place, taking whatever she pleased. 
I couldn't believe she had been so brazen about it. But even with the evidence right in front of me, I was still hesitant to take legal action. I'm very non-confrontational and didn't want to make things awkward with my neighbor and her family. But then, one day, I went to use my tools and I realized that not only were they missing, but Karen had also taken my pressure washer. Darn thing cost about $300. That was the last straw. I called the police and filed a report, providing them with the footage from my camera as evidence. The whole process was surprisingly straightforward and I felt a sense of relief knowing that I had finally put an end to Karen stealing. Of course, Karen was less than pleased with the outcome. She pleaded with me to drop the charges, saying that she had just been borrowing the tools and didn't mean any harm, but I wasn't buying it. I had given her plenty of chances to do the right thing and she had chosen to ignore them time and time again. In the end, Karen was arrested, charged with theft and had to return all of my tools that she had borrowed. She has a court date coming up next week and I'm hoping she'll face some serious punishment for stealing so much of my stuff. I may have lost a neighbor, but at least I got my tools back. Neighbors like this are the worst. I had a neighbor at my old house who used to swipe anything he could get his hands on. Decorative plants, birdhouses, tools, anything. Eventually, we all found out that he had a compulsive stealing disorder. His sister claimed that he didn't even know what he was doing or why he was doing it. It was such a relief when we moved and I didn't have to deal with Mr. Sticky Fingers anymore. Am I the jerk for not watching my nephew during a flight delay? Ray, 25 female, and I, 23 female, grew up in New York City. Our parents own a vacation home. When I moved out, they decided to move there permanently. They've only been back once since I recently decided to visit them. Mom and Ray were talking and my plans came up. She called and asked why I didn't tell her I was planning to go to Cali. I said it had nothing to do with her, so why would I have to tell her anything? She said it made no sense for us to do separate trips when we could just go together. I said she's acting extremely entitled to something she had no part in and I'm not obligated to include her in every plan I make. She said she just wants our parents to meet her son. I said he's like five months, you've had plenty of time to take him if it was important. Then she cried to mom. Ma said it was a good idea. I said if Ray cared so much, she would have planned to see them on her own. She told me she really needs this. I told Ray if she comes, she can't ask me for Jack. I'm not helping with her kid. Act like I'm not even there. She agreed. The day came and our connecting flight was delayed, so we had to stay the night. I was trying to fall asleep. She asked me if I was really going to sleep. I was annoyed. I said, if you leave me alone. Later, she asked me to watch the baby. I said, just hold him and go to sleep. She was scared someone would snatch him while she slept. I said she sounds crazy and no one wants her kid. She said she was exhausted and had been drinking energy drinks all night, but she was crashing and tried to put him in my arms again. I said, this is exactly why you should have just stayed at home. I told you from the jump, I'm not doing crap. You already forced your way here. Now you're just going to have to figure it out. She said, seriously, I'm exhausted. I can barely even keep my eyes open. I said, then go to sleep and closed my eyes. She knew what the terms were. We made it there, but later mom asked if she really raised me to be so cold towards my sister. She told me she had broken down and had a mental meltdown. I said I love my sister, but she should grow up and stop being so dramatic about a situation she put herself in. She said it wouldn't have hurt me to help her even just a little. I told her I didn't help her make the baby and she should have known something could go wrong when traveling. We got back a week ago and haven't spoken to each other at all, but she texted me today how hurt she was and she feels like I don't care about her or my nephew at all. I told her she knew what she was getting into when she begged to come and imposed on my trip. She said she thought I would have changed my mind when I realized we would have to sleep in the airport and that she would have done it for me. I said, your kid, your responsibility. I might be willing to just apologize to shut her up if people say I am the jerk. You're not obligated to include your sister in your travel plans, although I do think that, in theory, it sounds like a nice idea to visit your parents together. Nothing wrong with a little family get-together. In reality though, you sound terribly cold like your mother said. Do you hate your sister? What about your nephew? You sound like you do. It wouldn't hurt you to be a tiny bit helpful, especially in extenuating circumstances. What's your problem? If that's how you were going to act, your answer should have been a hard no when your sister asked to tag along. Had she known that's how you were going to act, I'm certain she wouldn't have asked. 
You took a great opportunity to spend quality time with your sister and her sweet baby, and you wasted it. You're the jerk. You can be technically correct and still be morally wrong. Everyone sucks here. Your sister for latching onto your trip and forcing you into the situation in the first place. And you for the absolute callousness with which you regard your sister and your nephew. In extenuating circumstances like a flight delay, all it needs is a little give and take to make everyone's experience a lot easier. I would never wish for anyone to have you as a relative. You seem to treat relationships as purely rules-based zero-sum games. What an awful way to live. Let's hope you never find yourself in a situation where you need someone else's help. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.